Thank you for joining us this morning. This presentation was created in partnership between Head Start and the Virginia Preschool Initiative and Title I. I am Courtney Seeley, the teacher facilitator at the Parent Resource Center, and I'm presenting today with Sandy Sprague, the parent facilitator at the Parent Resource Center, and Claudia Bonilla, our VPI, or Virginia Preschool Initiative Family Service Worker. This first section is going to focus on the physical space and in the environment of the home. After we received a lot of pictures of different physical spaces that were set up in different parents' homes, we also got tips from these parents and also from preschool teachers and other professionals in education who helped us compile all of this in one location. And so these are just some of the pictures and, and tips that we're going to share with you today. One of the biggest parts, of course, about creating your learning space is making sure that you have a designated space. You want that to be very quiet and free of distractions. You would want some kind of table space, whether children are seating, seated or standing is up to the child. And you know your child best. So you may need to designate that space with a mat or a rug or tape. You want to be sure that your child has space to move around. You're going to want to keep your supplies or books nearby and within reach. You want to be mindful of distractions in view of the camera. I have a screen behind me so that None of my family can walk behind me and, and be seen on camera. You want to be sure that you're taking care of your technology. Don't leave the technology down at all times. You want to be sure that you put that technology up somewhere safe in between those times when your child is using it. And you also want to make sure that you are another adult is nearby to help your child as they're um, in the picture. This parent added dollar store posters to a closet door and set up a table, chair and supplies in front of it to define their child's learning space. And just remember, preschoolers should be allowed to sit or stand in a defined space. In the picture, the child is allowed to have that entire rug. If you have limited space, you can always use a dining room table as your learning space. Um, another parent used a small hallway leading to their utility room or their laundry room as their child's learning space. And you can see how they use that space very efficiently and kept their schedule and important things on the wall around them. So you don't always have to worry about buying a table. You can always use what you already have. When you create this space with your child in mind, you're going to be the, the one who knows if something distracts your child too much. As you can see through some of these pictures, some parents have put posters all over the wall and some chose not to. This was a parent tip that was shared with us. They really felt that for younger children, they could get easily distracted by too many things in front of them. So they kept the space simple. Somebody also said that they would try to have some kind of fidget tool or a snack to use during virtual lessons. So you really have to kind of play with what works for your child. Also keep in mind that you need to design the space with your household in mind. So for virtual meetings, you might need to consider where your camera is facing. This child's virtual learning space is oriented so that his camera does not show what is going on in the rest of his house. His sister, her desk is facing the wall. When the class is looking through their screen, they can probably see a little bit of her brother behind her while he's in his class. But as for the brother, they decided to turn his desk around Around. So his back was facing the wall because his camera was picking up everything going on in the other part of the room and it was distracting the rest of the class. They kept wanting to know who was that back there and what's going on or something going on that's going to distract the rest of the class. So you just have to take into account how it's set up in your household and think through those things carefully. On this slide, there are some ideas on how to set up a child's learning space. There are some affordable options out there for purchasing a table. Some were from Ikea, some were from Walmart. All of them were under $40 for the entire set, the table and the chairs. However, if you're handy and you like to do some DIY, do-it-yourself projects, there are also some links on here for very simple plans to build your own table and chairs. So the only thing you would really need to buy is the wood and the hardware if you already had the tools. Here are some additional articles with more ideas for setting up and managing your child's learning space. There's just some really good tips in that first one, some great pictures and some, and some good suggestions. The second link has some information about weekly planners. So when your child is on an asynchronous time, 
It really gives some good tips for how you can structure their learning time. The last one, just creating the ultimate homework station. It's got some really good ideas on how to stay organized. You can see an over the door hanger where you can organize your supplies that way. So it's not taking up a lot of table space. And you can then close like a closet door or something to keep it out of sight. There's also um, a picture there I wanted to share of just, you know, mason jars or old jelly jars that you could clean out in order to use something like that to organize crayons and pencils, etc. Okay, I'm going to turn this over to Sandy and she's going to talk a little bit more about the supplies. We have, um, you can see a variety of pictures here of supplies. And the one thing we always emphasize, if you can keep the supplies in the learning environment, keep them organized. It will save on time of when you're ready, your child's ready to learn, that you're not searching and looking and wondering where they are. You want to keep them um, organized and contained in a variety of containers. You can see they've given you some ideas. Use what you have in your home. You can use some of these moving carts um, because, again, you can remove them from the area, especially if you're using your dining room area or whatever and then bring them out. Again, you have to consider the, the your children and if they're going to get into um, some of the items because they're colorful and fun and they just might think they want to do something in the living room when they're not in their learning time. If you have to, remove them in a place where you can consolidate them and that you can bring them back when they're needed because you don't want things missing when, when they're in a class or they're doing um, a project and a they have them there. Also, we always say to make a list of, of the supplies and post it where it's visible. Many times we're given supplies that are needed, but again, if you don't have that list and you're thinking, gosh, you know, what, what was it that um, was needed? So think of that. Think about how you could post it to make it visible for yourself. It might be a clipboard with a list on it and hang your clipboard. Also, I have found that those 3M contact strips and hooks they're awesome because they don't damage your wall and you can put your list up on that or anything else that is needed. iMom.com is a wonderful website. There is also one called OrganizedHome.com that also gives you plenty of ideas. It gives you printables, things that you can use. So even on that, you'll find a way to um, create a list. Make sure that you replenish supplies as needed. Don't wait until you're out of it and the child the next day is in need of it and you can't get out to, to be able to get that supply. So make sure that you keep track of that, especially on your list, and to uh, know what you will be needing in the future. The pencils, the erasers, scissors, posting notes, the journal. If your teacher has requested some specific items, make sure that's in the kit. We're going to share with you some tips and strategies and a lot of pictures when we reached out to parents to share their journeys in setting up their preschool learning spaces, as well as any tips or tricks that they learned along the way. We got a lot of replies. You can display work anywhere that you have space. It is best to pick a spot that is prominent and seen often. The refrigerator, that's another good option for displaying artwork and things that they might be working on that week. The kitchen wall in this family is where they decided to hang their work, artwork, and word walls. It doesn't have to be fancy. This parent shared this and just said, we change it weekly. My youngest are six-year-old twins. We are focused on reading. So um, some of the work in that picture might be a little bit more advanced than what you would see for a preschooler, but you could do a letter of the week or a sound of of the day or something like that. Let your child kind of drive this and, and let them put up on the wall what they are proud of. It might not look like much to you, but to them, it might be something very special. Here's a tip from a parent who didn't want to buy desk for each of her three children. Instead, they are all sitting at the dining room table. She further defined their learning space by utilizing these trifold boards that a lot of children would use for science fair projects. These help minimize distractions, but they also help keep everything at the child's fingertips. And this parent actually did a video for how she set these boards up because so many people wanted to know, how did you do this? So she takes you through step-by-step step how to set this board up for, for the child. And she let the child really pick the pieces that were going on the board. One of the helpful things was to have a schedule, um, a picture schedule for a preschooler would be very appropriate. She has a little pencil pouch there that just keeps things right there within her reach. Uh, this is another family that uses the dining room table for their learning space and they utilize bins so that each child can have all of their 
supplies in one spot and it helps keep them organized. This is a rolly cart that Sandy was speaking about earlier. And this just helps keep supplies organized and out of the way. So you can roll that cart right over to their table to, so they can use it when they need it. And then you can roll it back to wherever you need to store it when they're not using it. When we think about reading, a lot of times people think about, oh, there's a cozy little corner and a bookshelf. And that's great. It's wonderful to have a designated cozy spot to read in. But I also want to share that you really should be reading whatever you can, wherever you can. It's not just about sitting down and reading a book during reading time. Read at the store. Identify letters at the store. Um, bring your child into the kitchen and read as much as you can there. Read recipes with your child. Identify letters, label items in your home. When you check the mail, see if your child can point to your name on a letter. Um, take the flyers that come in the mail and or magazines and let your child cut out pictures or find items that start with a certain letter or a certain sound. The world is your classroom and you don't just have to have a designated corner to read in. You can read everywhere. I labeled everything, everything I could label in, in our house when my children were in preschool and learning to read. And we still, to this day, every now and then, we'll remove a piece of furniture or rearrange something, and I'll still find a label in every room. All right, children who are in preschool or kindergarten, they need a space to spread out. So one of the things that this parent, the biggest tip that they could think to share was that they need a table where they can spread out. And that is why I think a lot of preschool parents do use the dining room table or something and then move the supplies somewhere else when they're not using it. You really want to make sure they have room to, to spread out all of their manipulatives their supplies, their papers, they, they need a lot more place to spread out. Having enough space is important for preschool children. And this parent really wanted to share that they think having hands-on elements to work with as much as possible is also very important. It could be just as simple as counting the apples in your refrigerator or things that you already have in the house. This parent shared that they used candy corn and they counted candy corn and then she used the candy corn to make a letter or a shape that they were working on. Then they were able to have some of that candy corn as a snack afterwards. Things like Play-Doh and sensory bins. And we can give you more information about sensory bins as well. There are other tools that are recommended by this parent. They incorporated a letter of the day. And then they took items that began with that letter and put them down in the sensory bin. And the sensory bin can be something just like that clear shoebox. And you can fill it with rice or beans and stick items down there and then let the kids dig around for those items. Magnetic letters on your refrigerator is also a great way to display the sound or the letter of the day. Children learn best when they see, hear, and touch. Forming letters or shapes or numbers with Play-Doh or pipe cleaners that's going to cement that concept in their mind a lot better than if they were just shown this on a video or just told about it. This parent wanted to share that they give lots of breaks between tasks, and that's really necessary for preschool age children. Go outside or move around whenever you can. If you can't go outside, move around inside. Be patient with them and yourself. Set timers so kids understand when it's time to stop or start. Offer high interest activities during breaks like Play-Doh, painting, playing with their cars, whatever it is they're into, so that they'll be highly motivated to work diligently to get back to free play activities. I do want to share with you real quick a online timer. And the link is there, so you'll be able to access this on your own. It's free. It's just a website timer. This um, website has a whole bunch of different types of timers, but this one in particular is very helpful for preschool age children. And when you hit start, you'll see this little red arm go around the clock and disappear. And when you put it in full screen mode, you won't see any of these ads. So here are some different types of timers. I would not suggest a timer that makes a loud sound or is ticking or something that could be very distracting. You may need a device to show your child this timer other than the one that they're working on. But there are also um, physical timer that you can set on the desk. So you just set it for whatever time you'd like. And then you'll see the, the colored part of that disappear. And it gives kids just a very clear visual of this is how much time I have left, especially for those children who don't yet know how to tell time. And that's important that they understand that concept. Oh, I think we also wanted to just mention when you use a timer, be careful. You really need to keep in mind that some children will exhibit high anxiety when using timers during a learning task. That is something you want to really watch for signs of distress when you're using a timer. Um, I often used it in between tasks so that I could let kids know this is how long you have 
to transition from this task to this task. I use that in my classroom a lot. We also um, use timers to let them know when they needed to start something. Um, it, your class is getting ready to start. I'm setting a timer so you'll know when it goes off that that's when you need to log in, those kind of things. And I'm gonna turn this back over to Sandy. All right, thank you, Courtney. You know, as a parent, um, you are your child's first and most important teacher. And when your child enters school, you are the, you and the school become partners to work together for the successful development of the education of your child. So let's talk about what is partnership. It's a relationship. It's agreeing to work together to create, create a positive outcome for your child. It's equal. Um, it's sharing responsibility, such as in problem solving and communication. So let's talk about ways that you can be the partner with the teachers. Um, you'll see a list of things here. Again, you're going to see throughout this list how important communication, because that is the key, and that there's a variety of ways that you can communicate. So let's go through this list. We are in a new world right now, and we are all participating in Google Meets. And it's awesome to see each other, to be able to talk through um, some of the situations you might have, to get to know what your child is doing, what is the teacher doing, how can you be that partner with the teacher. Again, um, in setting up a Google Meet or any of, again, attending teacher conferences, Make sure that um, if you can't make the appointed time that you contact ahead to reschedule, just don't show up. Um, so please be considerate of everybody's time. Again, you're gonna decide what is the best way to communicate. We talk about keep communication lines open. Is it going to be through email? Is it gonna be through Glass Dojo? And again, this was new to me and I had to ask Claudio, but no, what is that? And again, it's just another tool that um, the teachers and families are using to share what's being learned in the classroom. So it could be through photos, it could be through videos, it might be through messaging. Um, another way to communicate is just simply using our phone. Um, we're doing that a lot too. So there is a variety of ways that you can communicate. Okay. Um, show results of activities provided by teachers. Again, what is benefiting your child. You are the constant person in such a variety of um, environments for your child. You know what's best. Give the teachers input. Um, what are your ideas? What are your concerns? Um, as they're doing activities and what are they doing at home, you can show them do, do, uh, during the Google Meet um, how you might have thought it might have worked better with your child or you might know that your child works better with manipulatives, might work better with some of the things you have at home. And so again, your input is so important. Um, the other thing is when you're giving feedback to the teachers, just make sure that um, you're doing it in a positive manner. Be respectful of each other. Let them know they're doing such a great job. Um, there's been a lot of differences going on, not only within our family, but also with the teachers and with the staff within the school. So make sure you're, you're that positive partner um, in working with your teacher. And again, you're going to be um, getting a packet from us. And within that packet, there is going to be a lot of different things um, that are going to give you more tips on how to be a partner with your teacher. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about community resources and how much is out there. And we really encourage you to look into some of the resources that we're going to share with you now. So we have a great regional library system in this area. Um, definitely want to encourage you to utilize um, the libraries that are out there. There's several locations. Um, I know in our family we've used Salem Library, we've gone down to Fredericksburg um, and used the main library. Um, of course, I live out in the courthouse area and I use snow also. Again, with what's going on with COVID, we wanna make sure that we uh, know what the services are that they are offering. They do have sat satellite branches at times within community centers. Um, they also have um, a vehicle that would go out at times. Again, that has changed. So. Um, 
when that gets back on the road again, that's just an awesome way to um, be able to get books and access some of their programs. But the one thing that um, I've always found that they are so good at is having a lot of programs that are a variety of ages. Um, I know one of the ones that uh, we access was the pause for reading where the children can read to a dog. And that's such an, a wonderful way to get children to love to read. But again, look at uh, that they have print and audio and video materials. So any way that you want to access books and reading, again, they have online databases. You can reserve a, com a computer. You can check things out. I think that the great thing about it, no matter what branch you're at um, or nearby, again, you can return it to any branch. Um, I found that some of the branches might have um, a book or video that I would want. They will send it to that and make it accessible to me. You can check out videos for a week and there's other items for two weeks. And again, you can renew them by telephone and online. So it's wonderful that we don't have to go to the actual library, um, but that you can reserve and renew any of your items. One of the things that we do encourage is that you get a library card if you don't have one. Um, you can get a library card. You can actually go online and get your card. And so that makes it accessible to all the services that um, the library does have uh, to be able to use. Um, I have a dear friend who, um, again, some of the programs they have that if you're losing your eyesight or your hearing or whatever, they can access things to organizations to help out even that. So. We just hope that you take the time to get your library card and use it with your family. Okay, we're gonna talk about something that my children did not grow up with. And again, it's those virtual field trips. Um, COVID has shut down a lot of the places that we would love to go in person. Um, but again, teachers and parents can access the virtual field trips. And um, you might want to ask your child's teacher if they're utilizing the field trips. I know my granddaughter, um, I've been able to enjoy several with her and with the school has used um, within their classroom. Okay, there is a variety of field trips. You'll see that we have, we're going to be giving you um, access to several online um, links that you can be able to click on and to just go places you might not have been able to get to. Um, you'll see that, again, this is um, Virginia Field Trip, and they have places like Jamestown. If you haven't been to Mount Vernon, you can visit Mount Vernon, the Science Museum, and even uh, some of the national parks. Again, the zoo, Luray Caverns. So it just it's a wonderful way to get to see these places if you've never been there. Uh, PBS has a wonderful site. Um, I actually went on it last night and was enjoying some of the things. Again, you can go on and get those things such as uh, the fire station, um, went to the dentist's office, the children's museum. They're really short clips. They're like eight minutes, six minutes, or some that are three minutes. Um, the sheriff's department. They also give you um, the fire station. Like you can see the fire station lesson plan, um, there's a lot of things for the teachers to use. There's activities for the kids to do. So it's, um, it's just an amazing thing to do. It's something very different. Um, and for the children to really see live what goes on in these areas. And it is done very well. Okay. We also, um, have enjoyed this, um, this link, but also that, Red Parent has got a lot of information for families. It, it, we have enjoyed having their magazine. Actually, we would have it uh, within our center. But many times when families have called in and have needed um, information, it's just been a wealth of information. We, I can't tell you enough how good this is. So you can go online um, and enjoy their site. And you'll see that they have a lot of um, guides and it might if you need childcare, and they will, they also have those types um, of guides. They also have health and wellness. They might have mom's clubs. You might need a support group. They have those there. Um, again, it's free. Um, there is a free digital magazine that's online, but also a lot of places like your doctor's offices, the libraries, some of your schools actually have the hard copy. 
So another site, again, very similar to Fred Parent is Macaroni Kids. So if there's anything going on within uh, our area when it comes to family fun, there's a lot of good um, articles in there as for a parent. Um, and again, they have the guides also. So we have some two wonderful um, links that you can go to again. And we also have some additional online resources. We have utilized these resources also, um, Reading Rockets and um, Coloring Colorado. You wanna go to the next one. So these, again, these are links that you'll be able to um, link to because we'll be sending you this presentation. The great thing about Reading Rockets and Coloring Colorado is that they're bilingual. Um, Reading Rockets provide some uh, building blocks for reading and writing. They also give you reading tips, connecting with your child's school. There's games and activities. Coloring Colorado also provides tips on helping uh, your child learn to read, succeed in school. There's learning games, um, how to build a relationship again with your child's teacher and the staff, and just a lot more so that you can click on the links and it will show you the English and Spanish versions um, from Reading Rockets and Color in Colorado. And then again, there's, um, we call them super duper publications, but there's an area in that within that is called Handy Handouts. And Handy Handouts is an online educational um, site that has a variety of educational topics such as school success, um, encouraging good behavior, special needs, disability information. And what you would do is you search by a keyword just to find the information and you will see that it's in English and it's in Spanish. You would just click on the picture or the link to show um, how to access all the, you know, the handouts. And um, the amazing thing that we really like, again, that this is bilingual. And then we have Scholastic. Scholastic, again, is another uh, link that they offer book lists and they will tell you the appropriate ages um, for the different books. They have articles, again, on school success, getting ready for kindergarten, um, activities for kids. They have a lot of printables. They're teaching kids phonics at home. They also offer book clubs, which um, is offered through your teacher involvement. Again, uh, there's a scholastic book club as well as Club Leo flyer link. So a lot of information there to support your learning at home. Thank you, Sandy. In this section, we'd like to share a little bit more information about the Parent Resource Center and invite you to utilize this as much as possible. We are the Parent Resource Center. You can see a picture of Sarah, Sandy, and myself there. Sarah Bell is our amazing administrative assistant. Sandy's been there for, oh, 28 years now. So she's been there since the beginning of Parent Resource Centers in Virginia. And this is my second year. Very happy about this center. So excited about all the resources that I'm about to share with you. The parent resource um, staff consists of myself. I have 20 years of experience in special education and regular education. And a parent, Sandy, was the mom of three sons with disabilities who has been working at the Parent Resource Center for over 27 years. Her children also went through Spotsylvania County Schools. We work as a team to model the partnership of parents and schools working together. All of our resources are provided for free. When people think of the Parent Resource Center, they think of the library and the library resources. These resources include books, DVDs, magazines, brochures, it also includes educational games beginning at the preschool level through fifth or sixth grade. These games provide a very fun opportunity to practice the skills being taught to your ch children in school. Children often don't realize they're learning when they use our resources, which is the best way to learn. In addition to the library resources, we provide direct assistance to families through individual meetings, phone conferences, and emails. Families contact us for many reasons. Some of these include concerns with the child's behavior at home or at school, their child's learning difficulties, bullying issues, information about the special education process, and seeking school and community resources and services. We're able to assist families through the problem solving process and we provide a connection for support. Often parents don't know where to go in, if they're having a problem at school. They feel like they're at a dead end and they give us a call and they realize there are a lot of other supports and people in our county that can become involved in any situation and help resolve any kind of issue. 
We have a variety of ways you can contact us and stay in touch with what we're doing in the county throughout the year. Our website and social media pages are full of resources and announcements that are very helpful to our families. The PRC page can be found on the Spotsylvania County Public Schools website under the Parents tab. We respond to emails in a timely manner and encourage you to contact us as needed. You'll see a couple of pictures there of our Parent Resource Center monthly newsletter, which also has links such as Google Meet links and registration links for all of the activities that we're doing in that month. You will get that at the beginning of each month directly from the county. So when you see an email from us, don't forget to click on the attachment because that's our newsletter. Again, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. Um, the Parent Resource Center and the offices of Head Start and the Virginia Preschool Initiative are located in the Center for Family and Preschool Services building in the Spotsy Courthouse area. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions, concerns, or requests, and we'll be happy to assist you.